microphones? success and thank you all for doing that. We appreciate it. <laughs> Twenty-nine days seemed endless, but there are a number in this room who have been at this for 2,555 days, over seven years. And that is also why we what we are celebrating tonight. And thank you again. A gathering to celebrate the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end. Since Thursday, I don't know, I find myself approaching strangers and asking, are you a voter in San Francisco? And then I realize I don't have a book. So I'm thinking of opening up a halfway house where we could de depress everybody, okay? I do want to thank everyone for coming. It was a total team effort. And I do like to honor a few people here today. I expect Supervisor David Chu will be here, and uh, his assistant will also arrive. Uh, I also invited John Alvarez and David Campos, who voted with David the lost cause at the supervisors, but now we're on the winning side. John Gollinger is here and a number of his planning staff, and we thank you, John. And John, we're going to ask you for an update uh, what's going on right now. You just told me some of the stuff that's going on down at the uh, election bureau. For spirit, and we thank you for spearheading this campaign. Brad Paul, your personal efforts and community support and your friendship is deeply appreciated. One person isn't here who we really wish for, and that's Sue Hester. She's recuperating and doing fine. She'll be back with us soon. But we must remember her for her many years of legal advice and support and, frankly, her many hours of pro bono. Without her, we wouldn't be here tonight, I can assure you. Uh, Steve Stone, uh, who is, I don't know if Steve's in the audience, and I know many of you wouldn't know him. Steve, Steve heads up the Heat Advertising Company, who was so gracious in providing us the advertising, the posters and the flyers, the no wall material. And before that, even a good number of the flawed flyers. And we thank Steve and his staff, Cheryl, Kitty, and Kate. I hope they're here by now. And we have Aaron Peskin, who was the organizer of this campaign, uh, the kind of the commander in chief. And we'd like to have some words from Aaron. But we'd also like to know from each of you uh, where is Bob? And uh, pull out. I want to show you something. Get ready to take some go, pictures. Go to go to go to go to take a look at this. Now zoom in <laughs> up a little bit.
guys want to, <laughs> you want to hang that from the roof while they're holding it. Over here, one and a half, maybe. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I don't know how we can do it. Uh, we were asked, uh, uh, I don't want to get into that by the management, to do anything permanent on the walls right now. Uh, we are in enemy territory, as you recognize, but that's fine. Okay. I want to thank Dale Armour for all the work he's done on That's me. <laughs> Rachel, it's helping. And it's been here on this, so we can have it on YouTube eventually, and uh, Facebook, and we appreciate it. I, if I can get very personal for a second, I really would like to thank my wife, Rochi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seven years, and she kept it all my hours away in, in meetings. You know, she always said that our three girls never play with dolls. They are always having meetings. I swear we are. Without her, this would not have been. No, no. I am sure. Uh, is David Chu in yeah. the audience? Yeah. Is Aaron Peskin in the audience? Yes. Yay! Yay. Aaron Peskin over here. Great to be back in the Golden Gateway. You always had it going on, and in the last 29 days, you show that you have everything that it takes to do what has happened not for a generation in San Francisco. When we embarked on this, I have to tell you a dirty little secret. I thought we were going to fight the good fight, but we were not going to make it to the top of the hill. One of the greatest campaign consultants in San Francisco told me, Aaron, it's just too steep a hill in that period of time. It cannot be done. And you all proved him wrong with your hours, with your money, with your diligence, with your organizing. And it's not just about the Golden Gateway. It's about all of San Francisco. Uh, I'm going to tell you the story that I uh, was really touched by. I. At the end of a really hard campaign, there's always some point when you're really tired and you just break down and start crying. And on Monday night, we were in there and we realized we were going to make it, looked like we were going to make it, and I said to everybody in the campaign headquarters, I haven't started crying yet. <laughs> and on Tuesday night, same thing, and Wednesday night, we closed the campaign headquarters at 9 o'clock, and that day, and John will tell you more, 4,500 signatures rolled in last Wednesday. And it happened to be John Gollinger and Suzanne Rucker's birthday, and at 9 o'clock I rolled in with a cake. We had a little quick party, lasted about 10 minutes, and then we spent all night validating signatures, and I said, I'm not going to, now it's not time to start crying. And I thought, you know, maybe we'd get through this whole thing without me crying. <laughs> Thursday morning, this is the day we have to turn them in. We've got the rented Penske truck. We've been up all night. Many people in this room, Mary and G, others, we've been validating signatures all night. And I have to go down to the campaign headquarters. We actually moved the petitions out to a secure location because we're getting a little nervous. And I went down there, and uh, there was really nothing to do, but there were a bunch of people there, and I figured I had to put myself to some use. So there was all these pizza boxes and all. I mean, I'm not going to eat pizza for another two years. but uh, So I said, well, I'll clean this stuff up. So I'm shoving all this stuff into a black plastic bag, and... John Gollinger tells me, there's a dumpster around the corner. So I've got the plastic bag, and I'm walking around the corner, and there's this woman walking down the street, and she says to me, Aaron Peskin, what are you doing here? And I say, wait, don't you live in the far outer sunset? What are you doing here? And she says, I know I'm late, but I'm here to turn in my petition signatures. And that was when I started weeping. <laughs> so this is not only a testament to this corner of the city, 
It is a testament to the entire city and county of San Francisco, which profoundly cares about its waterfront, which learned the lessons almost now a half a century ago of the Fontana Towers when this city decided it did not want to wall itself off as Waikiki did in Honolulu, when it learned from the planning mistakes. And then we became the most advanced city in America where we reversed our mistakes and under the leadership of then Mayor Art Agnos, rip down the Embarcadero Freeway. And today we say we are not going to repeat those mistakes. We are going to uphold that progressive history. We are going to stand with the members of the Board of Supervisors who were in the minority, who did not bow to pressure and money and lobbyists. And that is the tradition that we come from. And that is what we have to spread across the country. Now let me say this. This is a celebration for a victory, and let's stop for a second and take stock of the incredible thing that we have all done with people power, where we were outgunned by money, where we were blocked on the streets, and let me pass the proverbial hat around, because you all know what? The fight has just begun. It is unclear whether we are going to be on the ballot in a few short months or in November of 2013. John Gollinger spent his entire day with an attorney that we hired, an elections attorney who is not free, with the attorneys from the other side as the petitions are being counted as of this morning. We need to raise a substantial war chest, whether we're going to the ballot in a few months or in November of 2013. Uh, the good news is, this is the first race I've ever finished where we are in the black. <laughs> the bad news is, we have $262 in the black. <laughs> so, Enjoy this victory, get your checkbook out, and let's get to work because we've got a long way to go. Thank you all. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, as usual, uh, you've proven your leadership and your success. And we thank you. We're all going to be in this together, I know, from here until the finish line. I now see our... President and Supervisor District 3, David Chu, who has been a stalwart in helping us fight this thing, even though he's had his knocks many times. David, could you come up and say a few words? I cannot say thank you enough to every single person in this room for what we have all accomplished over the past month. Uh, and Aaron just said a lot of things much more eloquently than I can right now. I'm just going to add three things, really, three thoughts. First, uh, some of you may know that I had very few communications with Simon Snowgrove over the past two years. In fact, only on one occasion did we sit down at great length. This is the Friday before the first Tuesday vote. And I told him about halfway through our discussion that if we weren't able to get some real concessions, that there was a possibility that a grassroots effort was going to organize to collect signatures to challenge the same on the ballot. And he gave me one of those looks that said to me, you're not going to be able to get it done. And fast forward four weeks, the last Saturday before we had to turn in the ballot signatures, I ran into that same Simon Snow group <laughs> while I was collecting signatures on Polk Street, and he was passing out literature to get folks not to sign it. And he said to me, David, I can't wait till this is all done on Wednesday. And I said, Simon, it ain't going to be done on Wednesday. And he gave me another one of those looks that said, David, you ain't going to get it done. Well, guys, you got it done. Now, a second thought. The last month, the last 30 days, um, has been remarkably busy. I frankly spent much less time than I would have wanted to 
working side by side with all of you to collect signatures. We've been negotiating the budget, we've been negotiating more money for Rec and Park, we've been trying to negotiate charter amendments, and we've been having some very serious discussions about the future of our city in light of development pressures. Some of you may have followed a fight we're having about whether one of the most pro-development commissioners on the planning commissioner ought to be receded. Some of you may know that we have had a very intense fight, frankly the biggest fight since the 8 Washington fight, around whether CPMC, the corporation run by the Sutter out in Sacramento, ought to be able to have their way with development here in this city. And I gotta tell you that when we went through the 8 Washington process, and when Supervisor John Avalos and David Campos stood with me in voting against this project, I have to say it felt pretty lonely. But with 30,000 plus residents of San Francisco coming together, and all of you coming together to say, we need to stand for the neighborhoods, it doesn't feel so lonely. Yeah. Now, the last thing I want to say is echoing something that I mentioned at the very first fundraiser we did for this effort. And Brad Paul told me I had to bring up this analogy again. Which was, I felt 30 plus days ago, that we were at the end of the second movie in the Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back. And if you remember the feeling at the end of that movie, when all the power, all the resources, seemed to be in the wrong hands. And the good guys were getting their butts kicked. <laughs> well, let me tell you folks, we're rolling into the third film of that trilogy. The Jedi Knights are coming together. The forces of good are coming together. We've got tenants working with environmentalists, working with neighborhood folks, working with progressives. We are pulling this together, and I know whether the fight is in November this year or the November of next year, we are going to prevail at the ballot box because of you. Thank you so much. Thursday, and let me start by saying it again today. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco. It's a beautiful day for our waterfront, which we love. We have stood together and challenged the power at City Hall. It's an amazing thing we've accomplished already, and there's much more to do. Um, without repeating things that have been said, you know, I'm excited to be a part of this, first and foremost, because it's bigger than just us. We've shown, as Aaron said, that this can be done. For, for the first time in over 20 years, people have collected the signatures, hasn't qualified yet, but we've collected the signatures to put a referendum on the ballot. And that means it's not just an initiative, it's not just a policy proposal, it's taking a law that the powers that be thought was a done deal and saying, pause, give the people a chance to decide. That's something that already I know that tenants, seniors, environmental groups, folks on the west side, other issues on, in this part of town will be able to do the same thing or perhaps even better threaten to do the same thing <laughs> if developers like Simon Snellgrove in the future again spend seven years blowing off the concerns of neighbors. We now have a tool we can use and we're going to need to use it. Let me also say that I certainly am happy to take some credit for this but um, I'm just one person and you know I'd start with the people who spent hours after hours in that office um, and in our secret vault space. Um, you, you heard from Aaron, and Nancy Shanahan, who's standing behind him, the two of them. They kept our petition safe. They kept our petition safe night after night for the final week. Our petitions resided in their space. And uh, one of them was there at all times until we hired a security guard to make sure someone else was there. And of course, they did more than just uh, protect the petitions. They counted them. They raised money for them. Um, they did. They collected them. They did everything they could. So thanks to the two of them, probably more than anyone other than Lee. 
Um, the folks that were in the office with me, who many of you know, but I just want to recognize, can you raise your hands? Uh, come on up here, actually. Uh, is Suzanne here? Hi. Suzanne? Hi. Chris, come on up here. There are Chris, who represents Suzanne. Um, Chris McNeil, representing Sierra, can you raise your hands? Come on, come on, come on, come on up here. Competition drives for many years, helped us manage the paid operation. Um, Marion in the back here, who helped us organize the petitions and count them properly. Angela uh, on the right here, who started off processing data, we elevated to be a campaign organizer, and I've hired her uh, as our first new hire for the rest of the campaign. She's, she's going to be with us day after day going forward. Um, Kelly, who did nothing less than drive the truck to City Hall, she did more, but that of course, I felt so incredibly safe when, it, when I sat down in the seat and someone who actually knew what she was doing and took the wheel. I expected some Aaron to find some giant truck driver guy, but I, I felt safe with Kelly. Um, uh, and uh, Anne back here and we had a few other folks, Chris did our, helped put our website together, Anne and others helped validate the signatures and get it all done. So let me, let's get a round of applause for the office. Yeah. But money doesn't equal blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you have to care about the issue to go the extra mile, and they all did. Let me also say that um, you know money mattered in this campaign. We, we obviously didn't. You know Simon Snellgrove, I just found out, spent thirty thousand dollars on that blocking campaign. I just filed a report. So his spokesman complained that we spent you know three or four, or he get he said six dollars a signature, which is not true. Um, he, we estimate, blocked about 3,000 signatures, so he actually spent more than $10 a signature uh, trying to prevent us from, from, from getting signatures, and obviously that was money down the drain. Um, it does take money, and how many people in this room made a donation of some kind to this effort? Please don't be shy, raise your hand. Almost everyone. That's fantastic. Uh, it's going to take more going forward, but I want to specifically recognize uh, Dick and Barbara Stewart. I know Barbara I saw back there. Like the rest of us, live near the waterfront, love the recreation club, and are willing to put their money where their mouth is. So that's file public record. I didn't just out them. I didn't out them on Thursday, uh, but they, as many of you know, contributed half the money we raised to, to run this campaign, and that was extraordinary. It helped us get the ball rolling and keep it going. Thank you. Let me say, let me say a couple more things. Um, one, probably what you're most curious about is what's happening to the petitions now? Yes. <laughs> um, there's some people here who probably never want to see a petition again, but I, I missed them. I was actually excited when I showed up at 9 o'clock at City Hall this morning, was given a badge and escorted to the back room and saw uh, you know, a third of the boxes that we we'd given to them for safekeeping actually still there. I was really excited to see that. Um, so I spent the day, as Aaron said, with a lawyer on our side and a lawyer in Snell Grove person on the other side, about four feet away from three women who work for the elections department, counting book after book after book. And their first job, I thought, would take them a week uh, to do the raw count. They have to go through each book and double check our numbers. We, we think we knew how many we submitted for each book. They had to go back and double check. And the post-its we put on that said 39 or 96, in almost every case, we had it exactly right. They had, to, they had to scratch off almost none that I saw. That's unheard of. So that's a testament to who you selected, everyone who you know, made sure that the forms were filled out with a name and address, everyone who validated and, and crossed off signatures, we did that right. So in just one day, because we made it easy for them, because these people worked very hard, and I think because the developer was hovering over them, they actually worked harder, and in one day got through the raw count of 90% of the signatures we submitted. They, they checked over 27,000 signatures just today. Wow. So by my count, by the end of the day tomorrow, they will have done the raw, what's called the raw count of all the signatures. And starting Wednesday, could actually begin the process of doing the random sample to make sure we have enough. Um, that's going to take a few days. It might take a week. It might take more. We're not sure. But we very well may know by the end of next week whether we qualify. And as Aaron suggested, and Supervisor Chu uh, knows, the timing will still be tricky, whether we make it on November this year or next year. 
But the way I see it, it's a win-win. If we get on November this year, the momentum we've generated will go forward full steam ahead. If we're on next year, his project's on hold. His funders have to wonder what they're going to do with their cash for a year and a half, whether they're still going to have to, uh, they're going to have to hold it off um, for some possibility. And we'll have a year and a half to build brick by brick a real campaign. So I see it as a win-win. Stay tuned. As Aaron said, we're spending money already. Uh, so please do give when we ask you to, whatever you can. And I guess lastly, I would say that I could not be more excited about this campaign. Because unlike the usual thing where we're trying to do something